When Steve Cannell left Universal and he went to, to do his own deficit financing, The Greatest American Hero is the first show. This, this conversation took place, I swear to God. He called me on the phone, he said, hey. I said, yeah, what's going on? He said, man, I am pissed off. I said, what happened? He said, man, I just look at these pattern budgets on Rockford and I, I never really looked at them, you know, because at Universal people do this stuff. And I said, yeah? He said, I looked at these numbers for the music. I said, yeah? He said, this is complete baloney. This is wrong. I said, what are you talking about? He said, man, I, I'm figuring that your music is, is a third of the reason that we're a success. It's a third. I said, well, you know, thanks for the compliment, but you're an idiot. You know, it's not a third. It's, maybe it's somewhat important. You don't know what you're talking about, you fool. I said, all right, your point is? He said, well, this is, they're robbing you. He said, I'm getting wealthy here and you're getting nothing here. This is below. I said, well, Steve, you're wrong. You know, I'm doing fine. I'm a musician. First of all, we're supposed to come in through the kitchen and we play for you rich folks and then we leave through the kitchen. I said, you know, just the fact that you treat me nice and that you care about me and that we're friends, shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. He goes, Christ almighty. He says, you're, this is ridiculous. What's the most amount of money I can pay you and not get laughed out of the business? I said, all right. I said, you know what? I'll call you back. Well, make it snappy. Oh, okay. And I talk to Pete and I go, what am I doing? How do I do this? You know, I don't want to, for sure. I mean, it's his money. I don't want to rip the guy off ever, you know? So we come up with a figure that's big. And I call him and I say, okay, you can pay me this. What else could I do? I said, well, you know, I know Earl Hagen and I'm friends with him and Pete worked with him and I said, I guess you give me half the publishing, like Thomas did with him. He says, what's the publishing? I said, well, I ain't gonna educate you, you know. You'll learn pretty soon when you start picking up checks for half the performing rights on the publishing yourself and it's important and it'll be important 50 years from now, 75 actually. So he went, okay, that's what we're gonna do. I mean, that's how I've been treated. No lawyers, no business affairs, no executives, no meetings. You know, let's go to Bob's. Okay, let me tell you about this new story I got. Never even. He, he Bob's just, big boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. you know. For the people who might not know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, that's the way I've been treated. I've been treated the same way by by Bochco. I've been treated very well by Dick Wolf. You know, unfortunately, he, he works at Universal, which is more of a cookie cutter, kind of a business oriented thing, but, but he still treated me great.